Let's get into it. Wait. What a week. <laughs> President Biden and Donald Trump have officially clinched their party's presidential nominations after winning their respective primaries on Tuesday. <laughs> yep, that's the vibe. We always knew this is how it would end. But it was important to go through the process, like meeting up with your ex for closure, or reading the whole Cheesecake Factory menu before you order the crusted chicken Romano again. <laughs> no, no, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the RNC canned about 60 employees shortly after its new leadership installed by Donald Trump took over the committee. Couldn't have happened to a nicer group of people. <laughs> But like I told him, don't think of it as getting fired from the RNC. Think of it as starting an exciting new role at the Aren't NC. <laughs> the Aren't NC. That's what we that's what we're kicking it off with. That's, that's near the top. Really softened you guys up. Guys is gendered. The judge overseeing Trump's election interference case in Georgia threw out six of the charges against Trump and his allies, but left most of the indictment intact. Unlike that ass, said prosecutor Nathan Wade to District Attorney Fonnie Willis in a sweet, in-on-the-joke sort of way. As lovers do. You know? In a new <laughs> you know, not like in a real kind of harsh way, but like in a cute way. In a Newsmax interview... <laughs> You know what I mean, <laughs> you freaks. In a Newsmax interview on Wednesday, Donald Trump compared himself to Andrew Jackson and Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, and came to this conclusion. Nobody's been treated like Trump in terms of badly. <laughs> Nobody has been treated like Trump in terms of badly. Recent polling seems to suggest that voters are fine with this because Trump has always talked this way. This is a lesson for young people with political aspirations. It's never too early to start talking like you were kicked in the head by a mule. <laughs> Meanwhile, in an interview with MSNBC, President Biden criticized Benjamin Netanyahu over his conduct of the war in Gaza. He has a right to defend Israel, a right to continue to pursue Hamas, but he must, he must, he must pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost as a consequence of the actions taken. He's hurting, in my view, he's hurting Israel more than helping Israel by making the rest of the world, it's contrary to what Israel stands for. And I think it's a big mistake. Pay more attention feels maybe too gentle here. Let's practice more mindful bombing. Let's think about connecting the airstrikes to our breath. In the interview, Biden called for a six-week ceasefire, but when asked if an invasion of Rafah would cross a red line beyond which the U.S. can't support Israel, the president said this. It is a red line, but I'm never going to leave Israel. The defense of Israel is still critical, so there's no red line. I'm going to cut off all weapons so they don't have the Iron Dome to protect them. They don't have, but there's red lines that if he crosses, and they can, he cannot have 30,000 more Palestinians dead. Maybe there's no red line, but do you have to tell him there's no red line? When you're arranging a date, for example, you don't tell them that you can show up whenever you want and you'll still go, hey, no worries, because you have no boundaries and a pathological need to be liked. It's true, but you don't announce it. <laughs> National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke out against, quote, smashing into Rafa where there are 1.3 million people in the absence of a credible plan to deal with the population there. And again, as things stand today, we have not seen what that plan is. Uh, I'm sure BB is just putting the finishing touches on that plan. Oh, this just in, it's a stick figure giving Biden the finger. Yes. And then on, what do you want, how do you, you want to talk about this? You figure out a way to fucking, the terrible fucking atrocity. And then on Thursday, Chuck Schumer called for new elections in Israel, describing four obstacles to peace, the threat posed by Hamas, the failures of the Palestinian Authority, right-wing extremists in the Israeli government, and the current prime minister. The fourth major obstacle to peace is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has all too frequently bowed to the demands of extremists. You lost Schumer, man. Netanyahu's lost Park Slope. The Upper West Side is next. And then what's left for you, man? North Shore Towers, Westchester, Great Neck, give it up. You lost Schumer.
Vice President Kamala Harris went to a Minnesota Planned Parenthood this week, the first ever visit to an abortion provider by a president or vice president. Bill Clinton obviously never went inside. He just called after to make sure it went smoothly. <laughs> Staff at the clinic said they appreciated the vice president's visit and the opportunity to see so many of her Funko Pops up close. <laughs> said the vice president. Many of you have asked why am I here at this, at this facility in particular. And I will tell you, it is because right now in our country we are facing a very serious health crisis. And the crisis is affecting many, many people in our country most of whom are, frankly, silently suffering. Oh, that's why you're here? I'm here for a yeast infection, said a stunned patient who regretted not coming up with literally anything else to say <laughs> and felt weird about it her whole drive home. <laughs> the House on Wednesday passed a bill that would ban TikTok in the United States unless the app's Chinese-owned parent company, ByteDance, sells it within six months. But it's not over yet. If you're in line to convince yourself that you have undiagnosed ADHD, stay in line. It's sad to see this. Banning apps is a trauma response. The bill passed with overwhelming bipartisan support, despite Donald Trump saying that banning TikTok would make young people go crazy. Not like now, when young people are perfectly sane and simply think that Osama bin Laden made some good points. President Biden said last week that he would sign the bill if it makes it to his desk. Biden, of course, launched his own TikTok account last month, but he's far from the first person to try out TikTok and immediately decide the state needs to forcibly remove this from my phone. <laughs> it's unclear if the bill will make it through the Senate, where Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer hasn't yet committed to bringing it to a vote. And if enacted, the ban would face legal challenges, as well it should. The goal is to get ByteDance to sell TikTok to an American company, which means that the position of Democrats and Republicans supporting this bill isn't necessarily the data the app collects, but who has access to it. Fine. Fair enough. But what is your concern beyond vague assertions about privacy? What are you actually seeing in these secret briefings? What led to this to pass by such a wide margin? It's pretty galling to me that Congress, who we all know and love and trust, might pass a bill that, while not necessarily, but potentially, could ban a popular platform without ever explaining the actual reason to the millions of Americans who use that platform. These people work for us, and no one is being compelled to use TikTok. My feeling on this is simple. If Congress wants to tell the free people of America we can't use an app, then they get to share their super secret reasons. And then, one by one, members of Congress come into a big congressional hearing room on live television, and all there is in the room is a table. And on that table is an iPhone, a PC, and a 10-minute timer. And they have 10 minutes to turn an unsigned PDF on that iPhone <laughs> into a signed PDF on that PC. <laughs> then you can tell me how to use my fucking phone. I actually do find it, like, ridiculous. A bill, a, and by the way, not to mention the fact that if it does sell to an American company, do you really trust that that won't be some fucking drug deal, too? That sub, like, like, I saw, like, Stephen Mnuchin, Trump's former Treasury Secretary. Remember him? He says his, his wife held up the money with her gloves. Like, that's who's sort of eyeing buying this company. And it's like, okay, so we're going to put money in that guy's pockets to stop China from owning an app because it's very, very dangerous, but you won't explain why. And once that app is in the hands of an American private corporation, that threat to our privacy isn't so salient as to ever even tell us the truth about what it was. That doesn't really track to me. But what do I know? Speaking of uh, technological sophisticates, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, in rare form, said this of the bill on Wednesday. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. A winner. <laughs> Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson couldn't riff like that with a gun to his fucking head or a copy of Sports Illustrated to his head. Jeffrey finds more threatening. <laughs> also on Wednesday, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders introduced a bill that would move America to a standard four-day, 32-hour work week with no reduction in pay. Holds for applause by those lazy fucks. Ah. <laughs> Sanders explained that this will give workers more time for what makes life worth living, which in his experience is reheating soup in the microwave and going to the donut shop at 5 a.m. to argue about the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> I don't want fewer days at work. That's where the people I pay to hang out with me are. <laughs> Sanders noted this fact. 
We were talking about a 40-hour work week 80 years ago. And that's what people today, despite the explosion of technology, are, are working. The sad reality is Americans now work more hours than the people of any other wealthy nation. Well, sure, but we have all that extra time from not being able to go to the doctor. <laughs> Said one confused worker, if I don't have to work on Fridays at the slaughterhouse, would my parents have to get a babysitter? <laughs> Thank you, sir. That was for you. Fewer than 100 House Republicans, less than half the caucus, RSVP'd to attend the House GOP retreat this week, with many reportedly complaining about both the Virginia venue and the prospect of having to hang out with each other. <laughs> People don't want to hang out with me, asked Marjorie Taylor Greene, foaming at the mouth while drawing a gigantic penis on a billboard of herself. <laughs> Speaking of advertising, this, is, this was so weird. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem posted a baffling, nearly five-minute-long infomercial for a Texas dentist this week. I'm the governor of South Dakota and had the opportunity to come to Smile, Texas to fix my teeth, which has been absolutely amazing. The team here was remarkable and finally gave me a smile that I can be proud of and confident in. And that really is a gift that I think is going to be incredibly special to have. You know, I think that I chose the team here at Smile, Texas because they're the best. Well, when they first showed me with a mirror my new teeth, I started to cry. <laughs> Karen Governor, just post that on the internet one random day. Why you gotta go to Texas to get done to work? Besides, I don't think she should have posted on X. I think she should have saved it for Tooth Social. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A Democratic lawmaker in South Dakota proposed an inquiry in the legislature's audit committee, saying, according to the AP, I just thought it was a very strange video <laughs> about how much she enjoyed having her teeth done at that particular place. And it is very strange. It makes no sense for Noam to be advertising an out-of-state dental clinic, at least do South Dakotans a service, and recommend an out-of-state abortion clinic. <laughs> the share... The share of U.S. adults who identify as LGBTQ has more than doubled in the last 12 years. According to a new Gallup poll, that's, yeah, that's right. It's up from 3.5% to 7.6% now. It's oh, stop it. Yes, the alternative milks are working. I mean, sorry, it's crazy. This has, I mean, this has nothing to do with alternative milks. Some see the glass as 7.6% full. I prefer to see the glass as 92.4% still in the closet. <laughs> this trend reflects the growing consensus that no one is completely straight except for Taylor Swift. The news, <laughs> the news was announced during LGBTQ Plus's quarterly earnings call to the delight of shareholders. In other good gay news, the state of Florida settled a lawsuit challenging the Parental Rights Education Act, better known as Don't Say Gay. Sick, we can start calling things gay again, said Florida's bullies. <laughs> Equality Florida called the settlement a landmark achievement in the fight for LGBTQ rights in Florida. The settlement establishes that the law does not apply to library books. It does not prohibit references to LGBTQ persons, couples, families, or issues. It doesn't prohibit gay straight alliances. It doesn't prohibit book fairs that include gay books. And it doesn't prohibit clothing that does not conform with one's perceived gender identity. Uh, or prohibit instruction against bullying on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. And it does ban anyone from making watching Drag Race their whole personality. <laughs> boots the house down. Speaking of gay things, PETA released a statement asking the White House to use potatoes instead of eggs in their annual Easter egg hunt. Here to comment on the demand, it's love it or leave it head writer, Hallie Kiefer. Dear PETA, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just shut up! Oh, how about you just use potatoes and eggs? How about you just shut up? How dare you every day have to write monologue jokes about the world just being torn asunder as humanity attempts to drag itself out of the clutches of our blood-soaked, racist, misogynistic, xenophobic, queerphobic, transphobic past, and you're out here being like, oh, maybe paint a potato instead of a big- Shut up! <laughs> shut up! 
Also, you don't think I saw your other press release also release this week telling people to stop saying cheese when they smell for a photo? You know what PETA says you should say instead? This is true. Nutritional yeast, to which I say shut up. <laughs> Every time I see a press release from PETA, it's the dumbest, most clickbaity idea I've ever seen, designed specifically to catch my eye and my ire by floating to the top of the 24-7 news muck, which isn't easy to do. In fact, it's, it's almost impossible, given the never-ending onslaught of current events. I mean, really, what are you supposed to do, PETA? Animal farming is an important issue. You have to do whatever you could do, no matter how stupid it might be. To grab headlines nowadays, it makes all the sense in the world. Just because I think it's only going to inspire eye rolls doesn't mean I don't see the value in it. It's not like I know what to do either. Obviously, I don't. I write this show. You see our limitations. <laughs> so who am I to criticize you? I don't have any better ideas. And hey, maybe some weird but thoughtful person will think about that and think about eating animal products and sit with the ramifications of how animals are treated and see how that treatment is a reflection of how we treat ourselves. You know? And that's a conversation we need to have, so maybe it is, in fact, I. Who need to shut up? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Howie Keeper, everybody. I don't know if um, say yeast is going to catch on. <laughs> All right, kids. Say yeast. <laughs> that sucks. John Barnett, a former Boeing quality control manager who became a whistleblower about manufacturing problems at the company, was found dead in South Carolina on Saturday, which is interesting because Boeing had previously claimed that he was fine and just recovering from abdominal surgery. <laughs> the day before he died, Barnett had testified in a deposition about a series of safety issues he had seen at a Boeing plant. We've obtained this footage of his final moments. Them. For those listening to this audio podcast, it was the scene where an engine falls into Donny Darko's room. So now you know why I laugh. <laughs> and now you're freaking laughing, you're laughing so hard in your car. All right, the gym are on the toilet. Elon Musk canceled X's new partnership with Don Lemon before it had even hit the airwaves. But why? What a mystery. Musk claimed in a post it was because Lemon's approach was basically just CNN but on social media, which doesn't work as evidenced by the fact that CNN is dying. Unlike the thriving platform called X, which used to have ads for Apple and Ford, and now has what seems to be an Amish woman selling homemade jam. How is that even possible? How does she know? Anyway. Of course, Lemon tweeted, Elon Musk had canceled the partnership I had with X hours after an interview I conducted with him on Friday. Moments later, friend of the show, Kara Swisher, posted, Scoop, as I told Don Lemon would happen. The owner of this platform, Elon Musk, sent a terse text to Lemon, contract terminated, after an interview Lemon did with Musk last Friday that was not to the adult toddler's liking, including questions about his ketamine use. Lemon went on CNN to share a clip of their exchange about Musk's drug use. You talk about your ketamine use and, and depression. Have you, you also have said... And, and the, the reason I, sh I should say, like, the, like, the reason I mentioned uh, the, the ketamine prescription on the X platform was because I thought maybe this is something that could help other people. That's why I mentioned it. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, but I would say uh, if someone has depression issues, they should consider talking to their doctor about ketamine instead of SSRIs. <sighs> First of all, Elon Musk, drugs, I just don't see it. Also... <laughs> Man, the SSRI people should just put this on during the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're a great advertisement for ketamine, man. Totally, absolutely crushing it. A medical team at a London hospital used the Apple Vision Pro headset during two recent spinal surgeries. And yeah, both the patients died, but it was like the dinosaur was right there in the operating room. <laughs> Imagine, imagine, you're in there for fucking spinal surgery. You're, you're slowly, the, the, the anesthesiologist tells you to count down from 10. You're at four and you see the fucking goggles come down. <laughs> that is an absolute nightmare. Speaking of cool shit, Olivia Rodrigo handed out free condoms and morning after pills at her St. Louis gut show. This just in, Olivia Rodrigo has been crucified under Missouri state law. That's a shame. Terrible way to go. I love someone who walks the walk. The VIP passes came with a pap schmear. Oh. I said schmear. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's not schmear, <laughs> right? I don't know. Why wouldn't it be? British pop star Lily Allen said this week that while she loves her kids, having children had ruined her career. I do appreciate the honesty. I'm just not sure why she would say it at her daughter's birthday party. Anyway, good on her for saying it. Children should be saddled with immense guilt from the moment they're born. It's always worked for the Jews. Are we happy? No. But the test scores? Mwah. All right. Added Alan, it really annoys me when people say you can have it all because quite frankly, you can't. Speak for yourself, Lily. I have a thriving career and a golden doodle who, when left unsupervised, will eat the contents of an entire media company's trash cans and then barf in the biggest meeting she can find. <laughs> New Orleans' police superintendent said on Monday that rats had gotten into the police department's stash of confiscated marijuana at its rundown headquarters. Yeah, tell them it's rats, said two very high police officers <laughs> eating po' boys in a cemetery. Police Superintendent Ann Kirkpatrick said this at a meeting of the City Council Criminal Justice Committee. I want you to see the tray of all of the... Um, uh, roaches. Uh, major rodents yeah. uh, on the floor, the cockroaches, the rats eating our marijuana. They're all high. <laughs> What's the problem? Do the rats have jobs? Are they supposed to fly a plane later? No. Leave them alone. They've had a long week. Staff at a Virginia Wildlife Center are wearing fox masks as they care for an orphaned baby fox. Is it awe or is it fucking chilling to the bone? <laughs> Finally, some fox news I can get behind. They intend to reintroduce the fox into the wild and don't want the baby fox to become imprinted upon or habituated to humans. So you guessed it, they had to fuck each other with the masks on. <laughs> and finally, they're calling it skajoring. It is time for some Colorado Lion High action! Get ready, my friends. We'll show you exactly what 76 years... It's half skiing, half rodeo. Competitors don skis and are pulled by horses alongside an obstacle course with jumps to land suspended hoops with a ski pole. All this and more on this week's The Whitest Ways to Die. <laughs> <laughs>